Hey everyone, I'm Chris, and let's build and convert a Chaos Serastus Knight. Welcome to Always Paint the Rivets. So the first thing to figure out when you're starting your build is what pose you want your knight to have. I'm going to convert this Serastus Knight into a really chaosy looking knight. So I want it to look quite chaosy. I don't want it to look um, kind of stood still. I want it to be running. I want it to be moving. I want it to be looking aggressive. I think that kind of fits better with the chaos sort of narrative. You need to find one that looks like it's got the taint of chaos on it, brother. Some of these boys look too pretty. Yeah, you're right. Some of these guys do look a little bit too pristine. We've definitely got to make them look a bit more corrupted, haven't we? And by the way, everyone, meet Ribitus. He is our friendly neighbourhood space marine. He's going to be just chirping in every now and then in the video just to give us some helpful hints and advice and just contribute to what we're doing. We'll see how it goes. Now we'll move really quickly through the build phase. There's just a few things I recommend. One is maybe using blue tack first to pose your legs before you super glue them or glue them in place. And two, importantly, we're going to be doing sub assembly. So build the legs together and then build the arms on their own, including the weapon attachments onto them, the head, the main body of the knight, and importantly, leave all the armor panels off for now. We're going to convert them and deal with them all separately. Now to make this knight look like it's been corrupted by chaos, I'm just gonna have a look at what really stands out as the key chaos parts from the knight I've already got. So we've got this loincloth, it's kind of shredded up and looking a bit more ragged. These armor panel pieces of these spikes sort of like inset into them, they look a bit more pristine on the loyalist knights. Some hanging chains, some skulls, more skulls. Importantly, you'll see all over this model are these inset spikes onto the arm panel. So some of them point inwards and some of them point out. They could be quite tricky to do. We've got these spikes, these uh, bone spikes poking up from out the armour, and these wooden stakes. And all of these things are things we're going to have to try and mimic. Now one thing you'll notice with the Serastus Knight is the shield looks kind of empty. You're right, brother. My bolt rolls would smash straight through that and tear his arm or asunder. The knights the fought alongside myself and my battle brothers had shields full of plasma energy. Yeah, okay, so plasma effect is what we've got to go for. I've got an idea of how we could maybe do that. We'll see if it works out. I'll let you be the judge later on. And then finally, we're going to need to chaos up his face a little bit. Again, his armour panels look a bit too pristine, although you've got those glowing red eyes that definitely make him look a bit, you know, corrupt fundamentally. But yeah, we need to make him look a bit less pretty. How about you look in the mirror, brother? That should give you some inspiration on not very pretty things. Oh, brutal. Let's move on to get converting, shall we? Okay, so here's everything we've got to get done. Gonna start off relatively easy and start with some broken pipes and cables and work our way up to some of the more intricate stuff. Let's have a look at the parts that I've got at my disposal. So I've got this spare sprue from the Abominant Knight, so I can use some of those bits. The spare bits from the Chaos War Dogs, have a look at my previous video on those if you haven't already. All these bits from a Mauler Fiend um, or Forge Fiend um, that I've already built. Two different types of wire, one really thin, uh, one a little bit thicker, we'll use both of those. Some UV resin and importantly a UV light. Um, I'll show you what we're going to do with that later. Um, some 2mm chain. I've actually bought this from Cromlech but any old jewellery chain will do. Um, some green stuff and our usual sculpting and hobbying tools. In particular these silicone sculpting tools are going to come in quite handy. We're going to start by using the slightly thicker wire to create a broken cable effect. It'll just look like the cable severed and the wires underneath have been exposed. The cable we're breaking up runs down the back of the knight's legs. All I've done is cut a big gap in between the cable that's already there, so it looks like it's got two exposed ends. All you're going to do is place the wire at the ends of the broken cable. That way it's going to look like the wires underneath have been exposed and it just looks a little bit more chaos and a little bit less pristine, exactly the look we're going for. You should end up with something that looks like this. First bit of the conversion done. Now we're going to move on to adding some spikes to the armour panels. The spikes we're talking about are the ones you can see here on the finished knight, the bronze ones that are both kind of poking into the armour panel as well as coming out from it. 
There are quite a lot of these spikes to add. I've added them onto all of the pauldrons around the carapace armor and the leg armor of the knight as well, leaving the kind of chest pieces clear. I also had to make a few of these spikes myself using UV resin because I didn't have anywhere near enough from the spare sprue bits that I had. So I'll show you how to do that as well if you would like to create some more spikes too. First of all though, the spikes that I used were from the Abominant Spare Sprue. They're on this fisty sort of looking thing, and there's a big one, sort of medium one, and a smaller one, so all of them I'm going to use on the night. What's also going to do some hard work for us is some green stuff. If you've not used green stuff before, don't worry, it is relatively simple to use. It comes like this, with this blue part and green part. All you need to do is cut an equal amount of both and mix them together. If you want it to be a little bit more pliable, but it does get a bit more sticky, then use a bit more green than blue. By mixing the two together, effectively that's what makes the green stuff set. Now all you need to do is rip off a really small bit of green stuff. You can see I'm using a bit, maybe a little bit less than the size of a pea here. Grab your sculpting tool, and what we're really trying to do is blend and smooth out that green stuff into the armor panel, just to make it look like that spike is seamlessly integrated into the armor, rather than just something we've glued on separately. And on that note, I would definitely recommend gluing the little spike to the armor panel first. I didn't do that first time around and put the spike on top of the green stuff and it just didn't adhere to the armor panel well, it just kind of sat there and just kept falling off. I have also got some good for advice. Make sure you always keep your tool wet. <coughs> what? You know what I meant. Keep your scooping tool wet and it will help you mold the green stuff. Ah uh, yes, okay, okay, yeah, that, that does actually help. You can see I am using quite a lot of water here, just to blend that green stuff into the panel, it just helps in that smoothing out process. And this is what we're looking to create. I've created six spikes here, just to bolster out the amount of spikes that I wanted to put on my knight. And yeah, they're far from pristine, but with a bit of green stuff, and once painted, I think they're gonna look all right. Now to make these spikes, you're going to need a pristine one straight from the sprue. So make sure you've done this step before you've glued all your spikes to your armor panels. I'm just going to cut a really small indent into the back of this spike. This just means that then the top part of the spike can sit flush, where the bottom part of the spike will sink into the armor panel a little bit, help make it look a little bit more embedded into the model, rather than something we've added afterwards. Now mold yourself a small block of green stuff, and all we're going to do is press that spike into the green stuff and let it set overnight. I pressed the green stuff in just a little bit around the edges of the spike, just to make sure that it was sat properly in there. I was really mindful though that I didn't cover the top of the spike up. I needed to make sure that I could get it out of the green stuff obviously the next day. And here we are, 24 hours later, ready to get the spike out of the mould. Now I just used this sculpting pick to try and gently ease the spike out. And it worked really well actually, it came away so easily, I was so relieved. And there we go, now we've got our own spike mould made from green stuff. Now all we need to do is fill that mould with UV resin, set it with a UV torch, and then pull our brand new resin spike out of our mould, and then we'll be ready to put that onto the model. I've added a bit of wire into the mould just to make sure I can pull the spike out once it's set. I will tell you now, this failed and was pointless, so don't bother doing this yourself. You're right, that was pointless, Chris. If you were part of the Adeptus Astartes, I would have had you disciplined for such insolence. Well, it's a good job I'm not then, because that's probably one of the lowest blunders that I'll make during this conversion process. But as you can see, the spike came out really easily from the green stuff, just using my fingers. I did have to use a little pick tool for other spikes, maybe I just set them better. Um, I then just set the bottom of this spike a little bit more with a UV lamp, and then just gave it a really little trim, just where some of the UV resin had spilled out over the top of that green stuff mould and set. And that was it. This spike was then ready to fulfill his spiky destiny sitting at the bottom of this armor panel. Because this is resin, make sure you use super glue to make it set. But that's it. Glue it on and you're done. Now let me just show you where I place these spikes on my version of the night. So I put two poking inwards on the top part of each pauldron and then two poking outwards on this bottom part of each pauldron. I then had three spikes poking out the front of the main carapace piece of armor, and then used five smaller spikes poking inwards at the top, and then I put three spikes at the bottom of each leg panel, and left all the knees and chest pieces with no spikes on them at all. Good to get those armor spikes done. Let's move on to doing the bony spikes and the wooden stakes. 
They both protrude up from the armour, so we're going to cover them both off at the same time. It's pretty much exactly the same technique to get both of those looking the way we want them to. Just add a small bit of green stuff and sort of blend it in so it looks flat as possible against the armour panel to make it look like it's not something we've added. Then just press the bony spike into the green stuff. Worth mentioning these bony spikes were all left over from the Chaos Knight kit that I had previously. There were also some smaller ones in the Chaos War Dogs kit, so you can use either depending on which one you like best. Now I'm just going to use my hobby knife just to add some slits which make it look like the armour's broken and this bone has kind of pushed up through it. The metal would naturally split to allow space for that bone to come through. So that's why I'm just making some small slits and going to make these as detailed as I sort of dare with my sculpting ability without ruining it. Where this bone has pushed up through the armour, we're also going to add some blisters to the armour as well. This again just enhances that chaosy sort of look. And you can do as much or as little of this as you want. And there we go. Smoothie smoothie, green stuff plonky plonky. And remember to always keep your toe wet. <laughs> again. <laughs> okay, right, next up, let's add these wooden stakes to the main carapace armour, and one each to each pauldron. Now I didn't have any of these wooden stakes left from my old Chaos Knight kit. The kit only comes with one set and I'd use them on my other knight. But I did manage to find some on eBay. Thank you so much more laughs bits for having these in stock. Now to add these all you need to do is follow the same technique we used to add the spikes to the rest of the armour panels. Add a bit of green stuff, plonk the stake right in the middle. The only thing that I found is you might need to just add a bit of super glue. I kept knocking these off my hand and because they're a bit bigger they tended to move a little bit more. I added three stakes to the central piece of carapace armour. We're going to string some chain between each one of those stakes in a little while. That again makes it look really in tune with the previous Chaos Knight. And I added one stake either side to each pauldron. Before we add the chain though to those stakes, let's add some chain to one of those pieces of leg armour. Really easy to do this one. All we're going to do is add a little bit of super glue into the corners where I want the chain to stick. And then we're just going to drape it diagonally across this piece of leg armour. We're going to drape it diagonally either side and then we're going to do one vertical and purely horizontal piece. So it's kind of like eight points, like the eight pointed star, just making it look again a bit more chaosy. And there we go, this is what you'll end up with, a nicely chained up piece of leg armour. If you're like me and you're a little bit enthusiastic with the super glue, then just get a little bit of tissue paper and just wipe it away. It'll just keep the armour panel looking crisp without any blobs of super glue ruining it. And using the same chain, just glue the chain between those wooden stakes and the carapace armour. And this is now the main piece of carapace armour fully converted. And I think that earns us some ticks on the board. Now the final technique we're going to use is to add some spikes onto the armour panels. These spikes are going to sit within the raised edges of the sort of raised trim each armour panel has. All we're going to do is mould some green stuff, make it sit as flat as we can in line with that raised edge and then just really shape it into a spike and try and make that look as good as possible really. So cut away any green stuff that you don't need and keep shaping and moulding that spike so it looks like it's as fluid with the edge of that armour panel as you can possibly make it. And then you'll get to a spike that you're pretty happy with. Like, I'm pretty happy with this right now. Looks pretty much as good as I think I'm going to get it. And that's another thing ticked off the list. Now for the head. The head is a really kind of focal point for this model. So we need to do something relatively decent with it. This is what we've got at the moment. This is what we'd have out of the box. I want to make it look a bit more like this. We've got pipes coming out the side of the face. We've got this kind of like half skull type mask on this guy. The eyes themselves look a bit bigger um, and we've obviously got two different tones going on there. Some pointed teeth. It looks a lot more chaos. So this is what we want to try and replicate. Back to the spare bits from the Chaos Knight I've already got. And we've got loads of spare face armour. There's loads to go out here. But I do really like this kind of melted skeleton-y looking one. I think we're going to go with that. The only problem we've got is that the Serastus Knight has a bigger head than the Chaos Knight previously, so the face armour doesn't really fit properly. But what we're going to do is cut sort of half of it away. I think that will make it really tie in with the previous Knight and again make it look like it's part of a coherent Chaos Knight family, rather than again something separate that we've converted. I've just marked up with a sharpie where I think I need to cut. 
This is just so the mask will sit nicely around the eye sockets of the existing knight head. Then once you're happy with your markings, just get it cut up. Then just dry fit the face armour to the head. Once you're happy with how it's positioning, then you can actually glue it down. I actually cut my face armour into another two pieces here, just because it didn't sit quite as nice as I'd like. So I'm going to have one front sort of like mouth grill piece and then a separate piece around the eye and then kind of stitch those two things together using a little bit of green stuff. And once I had both bits glued onto the head, it looked like this. Now all we need to do is add some small pieces of green stuff between the front face mask and the half eye lens. That will just make it stitch together really nicely and make that skeleton mask look complete rather than two separate pieces. Now in the Chaos War Dog Sprues, there's a face panel from the Armager Warglaives which has got a Cyclops eye. I really want to use that eye for this Chaos Knight. I think it will look really good and it will add to that chaos effect of the head. So I'm going to get that clipped out and get the eye cut down to size ready to slot into the central slot of the head. It's a little bit fiddly, a little bit delicate, but with a little bit of positioning, cutting down, refining, you'll be able to get it to fit just right. Next on the left side of the knight's head, I put one of the full face plates on without amending it at all. We are going to hang some chains off it. The chains I'm going to use are also from the Chaos War Dogs kit. They've got this sort of like loin clothy hanging chain thing going on and that will be perfect and I think really fit nicely on that side of the face mask. Now to make sure I cut the chains at the right angle so they fit nicely onto the face plate, I'm just going to hold them up against it, being really careful I don't clip the face plate underneath and then just going to snip along the chains. And then just glue them in place. Now I really want some cables coming out of the knight's face. There's a big gap on the right hand side which is an ideal place to nest some cables in. So I'm going to shove a load of green stuff in there, smooth it off, nothing fancy, then that'll be an ideal place to plonk some cables in in a minute. Then I've grabbed the same wire that we used for that exposed cable earlier. I'm going to fold this all together to create a sort of bunched up load of wire look and then snip it at either end. And then simply I'm just going to shove one end of that bundled up wire into the bit of green stuff we just stuffed into the right hand side of the knight's head. Now the wire didn't sit neatly against the back of the head like I had sort of hoped. So what I'm going to do is just blob another bit of green stuff there and again just try and incorporate that into the head. Stuff the wire into that and it should sit quite nice and firmly. Adding a little bit of super glue just to hold it extra firm and we can call that bit just about done. Now that cabling is looking a little bit messy. I've decided to make it look like the cables are also bursting through the side of the faceplate. It kind of ties in with how the spikes and everything are bursting out of the carapace armour. So I think that could work well. I'm carefully cutting the faceplate down to size, dry fitting, chopping a little bit off, and then once I'm happy with the fit, just going to get it glued down. And finally I decided to add this little piece of curved pipe to the other side of the head, just again to add a little bit more visual interest and make it look a bit more chaosy. Fwah, that was quite a lot of work on the head. Let's get the tick on the board and only one thing left, the shield. Let's get started. Now for the shield, we're going to use this extra fine wire. Now around the inside edge of the shield are these little energy node looking things. And it's those energy node bits that we're going to attach the wire to. This is a little bit delicate, shall we say, because the wire is so fine. And if you've got sausage fingers like mine, it's not the easiest task. Use tweezers, use whatever you can. But I actually found that some fast setting super glue and hooking the wire at the edge so it just circulates around the edge of that energy node really gives it a little bit more surface area to stick onto and helps make the whole process a lot easier. Once I had one end of the wire completely secured to the energy node, I then cut the wire to length and gently massage the rest of it towards the energy node on the opposite side of the shield. You just need to make sure you leave enough length so you can crinkle and make the lightning look a bit warped so it's not just a straight line going from one node to the other. And now all we need to do is continue that process for all the other nodes. Take your time, it is a bit fiddly, um, add the little hook to the wire that does genuinely help make it stick um, and remember if you've got a little bit of wire that's just overhanging you can just snip it off later, it's really easy to do. And eventually you'll end up with something like this. 
I've added a few extra bits of wire that attach to the wires that connect the nodes together. I think this just made it look a little bit more full, made it look a little bit more plasma effect. But you can do as much or a little as that as you like. And just to finish it off, I added a skull and some more spiky bits just on the top of the shield. Again, just selling that chaos vibe. Now, annoyingly, I forgot a bit of the build process. We still need to do the loincloth. Luckily, though, it's really easy. I'm using the bigger of the two loincloths that come with the Serastus Knight already. And all I'm going to do is cut it up into a sort of raggedy shape. I'm going to go for a little bit of a slant on it and just make lots of holes, smooth it down, make it look as fabricy as I can, but fundamentally just make it look ragged. You should see the size of my loincloth, brother. It rivals that of the war on the Imperial Knight. Oh man, I do not want to know. Okay, all right, we're pretty much finished with this loincloth now, and you will end up with something like this. And that is a really satisfying final tick for all our converting being done. Now we just need to assemble the knight. We're going to assemble the skeleton now. We're going to glue the head on as well though, so that will be fixed permanently. But importantly, leave off all the armour panels. The reason why you want to leave these off is because we're going to prime them and paint them separately. So we're heading now quickly towards the painting phase. I'm going to add a few small drops of super glue to the bottom of the foot in contact with the base. This will make it easier for painting and also to actually assemble this knight and ensure that we get that pose that we want just right. The arms attaching to the main body of the knight don't actually need to be glued. You can just twist these on. So twist those on, but what we'll need to do is fully pose the lance arm and the shield to get it just how we like it. To glue the main body to the legs, I'm going to use super glue. But to glue the arm poses of the knight, I'm going to use plastic glue mainly. That's because the plastic glue will set a little bit more slowly, so it gives me a bit more time to just ensure that the arm is in the exact right position that I want it to be in. Once I'm then happy, I can add little bits of super glue just to hold that position in place and move on to the next part of the arm. This is a little bit of a slow process, just keep going bit by bit, working through all those movable joints and you'll get it into the position you want. And then finally, after what might feel like a lifetime, you'll have a fully built, customised skeleton of a knight. We've still got to paint it, but you know, it looks good just like this. And this guy is an absolute monster. I mean, look at the size of him compared to a Chaos Knight. He is, he's huge, absolutely huge. He's about half a knight taller. And um, with all his armor and stuff on, he, he is massive. Ah, size means nothing. Give me a blade of grass, the red gobbo's nostril hair, and an Eldar eyelash. And I'll take these guys out. I'm five miles away. And that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Next video up on the channel will be showing you how to paint the Serastus Knight up to look like this. So please do subscribe if you want to see that. But that is it from me for now. And that is it from Rivetus. And it's ta-ta for now from me. A ta-ta for now from Rivetus. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, always paint the rivets. See you soon.